who cares if this image is rubbish? Seriously, who cares? Look where I am. Look where I'm sleeping. <sighs> As landscape photographers, we all face the challenge of motivation and keeping our photography fresh and exciting. And this can be difficult. It's all too easy to shoot the same compositions over and over until you think there's no more to be had from that location. Or to shoot those iconic viewpoints and come away feeling empty as we see the same image being reproduced time and time again. Some people overcome these challenges by choosing to shoot locally, visiting the same locations many times in many different conditions. They get to know a landscape intimately and see something new every time. Their images are original as these locations are seldom shot and they feel fulfilled and happy with their work knowing that they are creating images that most people would walk right past. Although I love to shoot locally and get familiar with the location, I often find myself getting itchy feet and have a desire to pack my bags and travel to new and distant lands. The anticipation of exploring an unfamiliar location feels fresh and exciting. Not knowing what you'll find or where you will end up is a feeling that I need to experience time and time again. New smells, new sounds, new tastes, new people, new landscapes. It's why I shoot. So tomorrow I'm going to the Outer Hebrides, which is a group of islands off the northwest coast of Scotland. The only way you can get there is by boat, and the next boat isn't until early tomorrow morning. So I'm in a, a bit of a dilemma here. Um, do I leave my house crazy, crazy early, drive through the night and catch the ferry tomorrow morning, or do I come to Scotland a day early and find somewhere to stay that's close by to the ferry terminal? And I can tell you I am doing the latter, but I ain't staying in no hotel. This is Scotland and I'm going camping. Oh, I wish that you could stay. Wow, that is why I love coming to new locations. Down there is possibly the best campsite on this planet with the best view on this planet and possibly the best location on this planet. And it's all free of charge. Well, I've made it. Um, I'm sure you're wondering where I am if you don't already know. I'm, I'm actually quite confident that a lot of you already know exactly where I am. But I'm on the Isle of Skye, which is the departure. It's where my ferry departs from to go to the Isle of Harris and Lewis tomorrow morning. And there's this fantastic bay. It's called, forgive me, pronunciation, disclaimer coming up. It's called Kamasunre Bay, I think. And it's this isolated bay uh, you can't get to it by road the only way to get here is to walk in and it's, it's not that far to be honest it's probably about three miles it's taken me an hour give or take um, and it's just stunning you feel so isolated there's three buildings here one I think is a farm and then I believe there's two other bothies but one of them's closed down um, and one of the bothies, one that's not closed down, is a new bothy. Now, I don't mind bothies, I quite like them, but I don't want to stay in them when I'm doing photography because I'm gonna be getting up at like five in the morning. I don't wanna be packing my gear, getting dressed, waking everybody up. So I've brought my tent and I'm gonna find a campsite. If the weather turns, which at the minute, I can't see that it's going to, but if the weather turns, I can always go and get shelter in the bothy. I can also use the bothy as a base to cook dinner, clean and maintain my gear and all that sort of stuff. So this is just, this is phenomenal. I'm gonna go and explore 
set up camp, and then hopefully take some photographs. Well, this is just absolutely stunning. I really wasn't expecting the weather to be so kind. I've been regularly checking the forecast over the past week or so, waiting for a window of opportunity. And that window never came. So in the end, I just decided to come anyway, because, well, it's so hard to predict the weather in Scotland. Um, and it looks like my gamble paid off, because this is amazing. I have decided to sleep in the boffy tonight because there's probably about five, six, maybe seven guys all from Germany. Uh, half of them are photographers, so they're all getting up early, no one cares. They're a really, really nice bunch of guys, so I'm looking forward to getting to know them. Um, doing a bit of socialising and just meeting new people, that's what it's all about. But for now, it's all about photography. So I am exploring this coastline, looking for compositions, because I think tonight, should be quite a lovely evening. So I'm just walking along the shoreline, looking for any areas that catch my eye that might make for a good composition. Um, from the hike in, from those hills behind me there, I spotted this river which is meandering through the beach down towards the sea. Um, you can just see it here. Um, and that looked like it had a lot of potential. But now I'm here, um, I mean it's still nice, don't get me wrong, but it's just not as nice as I would have hoped. But actually what concerns me more is the amount of cloud that seems to be rolling in from the west, which means there's a good chance that any colourful sunset that might have been on the cards is now going to be completely snuffed out, and I expect that's what's going to happen. But what do I know? What do I know? As a general landscape photography rule, the first thing you look for is light. And when there isn't any light, the second best thing to look for is any kind of S-shaped curve going into your image. If you can find a composition that has a lovely sweeping line, the smoother the better, then you are going to get a quality image. And that's what I've got here. It's not a perfect S-curve but it's a good one, and I'm going to use it to its fullest. I don't normally say this, but for this image, I'm actually not going to use a polarizer. And the reason is, we've got like grey stones, grey water, grey skies. And by using a polarizer, you take the glare off the water, which means the, the lead in, the lovely S-curve, the lovely lead in S-curve of the water, also just becomes grey, whereas when you leave the polarizer off, um, you actually get the reflection from the brighter sky. So the sky is brighter than the ground, obviously. And what that does is that gives you contrast. That makes the lovely S-shaped river pop. It makes it bright, it makes it light. Um, and yeah, by putting a polarizer on, kills it. And in a lot of situations, that's a great thing to kill reflection and kill glare. But you know, you've really got to know when to use it. Um, and now 
is not the good time to use it. What I have got on is a 10 stop filter. I'm going for a lovely long exposure because we have some great shapes in the sky um, and the clouds are moving over really fast. So we should get some excellent motion. That's it. I'm going to calculate my exposure. I've got my composition set up and yeah, it's just who cares if this image is rubbish? Seriously, who cares? Look where I am. Look where I'm sleeping. Honestly, it just, just doesn't get much better than this. F11 with an exposure time of 1 15th of a second. When you stick a 10 stop filter on that, it becomes a one minute exposure. Composition set up, sky's looking great. I'm gonna take the image. the light fading and an early start on a long walk back to the car in the morning, I decided that my photography for now was done. It was time to eat dinner and think about the following days ahead on the Isle of Harris. the lovely background over there then um, yeah possibly a couple of nice images I'm waffling I'm waffling I am waffling we'll go again we'll go again